We cannot remain satisfied with protest. This historically operative way of challenging the organization of power is now considered naive, childish, self-complacent, and unproductive. Should we suspect that digital art, glamorous lure, a blue sleeping pill, to entertain those who produce it, just as turpentine intoxicates the painter, and for its consumers to help maintain their belief in the illusion of positivism, progress, emancipation through science and novelty gadgets. Trapped in a post-science world, without even knowing it, one already described by Rabelais in the middle of the Quattrocento. Should we suspect the apparent direct opposites of these Mephistopheleses, the regressive moralists and semiologists who turn their indignation into capital, to recoup their 30 pieces of silver, using correct consciousness as a flagship, commoners and common goods as their willing victims, promoting bottom-up processes of, on the condition that they be the masters of ceremony in their Prada suits, the intellectuals denounced by Chomsky who safeguard the system, its means, meanings and authority, but nevertheless claim, by virtue of their indignation, the magnificence of their position, of their forgery, should we reveal that these two paradigms are simply the jhanas faces of the same system in a symmetrical convergence of interests and benefits? Could we develop a paradigm other than the interplay between the cynic and the clown? Should we denounce our academic standing as a wasp-like trialophile position of expertise? operating and reproducing the new disciplinary vogue for our three daily obols, the standard rate for courtesans and Hitler's the time of Cleon? Are we trapped in false debates between hereditary abstractions and social formalism? Or even the counterpart of all of this trapped in the empty speeches of gala socialism? Has the empathic penitence of our silence rendered null and void the articulation of our experimentation? Should we denounce the million nymphs pride and foolishness and subject them to their weak suffering. Should we suspect that in the amnesty's aftermath we will have to pay the fine in exile, drink the conium, or even accept being forgotten in our escapist digital swan song? How to embody the performative polymorphism, inheritance of our technical social economies and language to vectorize the fiction of identity egotism towards new sorticians of assembly at a time when the similitude of appearances is dismissed as fide or l'anglaise, at a time of computationalism when space is quantized with subjectivities. Should we suspect that our own graft is in fact the suspect? Suggest another game, one we could lose. Try to remember, it was in the gardens of Marienbad these rules of predictable. We are in the midst of a paradigm shift, to quote Thomas Kuhn, between two inherently incommensurable systems. The old system that uses technology to reproduce and perpetuate top-down processes, which they falsely claim to oppose, and a new system that needs to discover its potential, its limits, constraints, intrinsic logic, to renegotiate the scenario of thinking and doing. But architecture, the means and the meaning, rearticulating le vivre ensemble, and the common good, for protocols more disruptive than linear, more heuristic than deterministic, more anthropo-technological, slaughter ditch, than purely de dedicated to accuracy, performativity, expertise, now analyzes one symptom of the copy-based syndrome. Digital disobedience, 
can be described as an alternative frame of thinking about the application of novel tools in our contemporary discourse. Architecture as a discipline is on the verge of a decisive moment. Automation and artificial intelligence will bring more change to the entire practice than even, than even the revolutionary introduction of computational tools did in the last quarter of a century. This brings along an entire set of questions which digital disobedience attempts to ask. The answer is not the main issue here, rather the set of opportunities presented in a critical interrogation of our current and future relationships to novel ecologies emerging in society, economy and technology. How will we, as architects, respond to this rapidly progressing change? Is being docile in expectance of the best a sufficient position to maintain? The collective architects on display here refuse to be usurped by a neoliberal position on computational design and architecture, and rather support an idea that fosters a speculative approach to the future. A position that embraces change triggered by technological progress in the methods of materializing architectural entities. A future in which robots and humans form novel modes of machines infused with aspects of morality and inquisitive intelligence a post-capitalist future that embraces the radical change in our social texture triggered by the possibilities of a world governed by deterritorialized entities in which we expand, repurpose, or accelerate aspects of our culture and technology for the benefit of our world at large. How is one to digitally disobey? Would the ultimate disobedience be to automate design, to automate intuition, While the profession would decry the idea of automating intuition, anathema, to a layman's eye, such intuition has already been automated. Turing complete neural networks are able to intuitively, a justifiable term as even their programmers do not fully understand the logic of their working, synthesize creative works, everything from Monet to Shakespeare. To a Philistine, Van Gogh might have appeared to have been automated. Arch vaguely proves poor architectural writing has been automated in a literary project that has no aspiration to be read, as no one reads the text of the data set on which it was modelled anyway. As cultural content is generated faster than we could ever consume it, and content that does not make it to an audience is consumed instantly, do we really pause to absorb its meaning? Is digital disobedience this acceleration? The skimming of latent space in order to shift from computational design to computational derive through a snow crash of endless difference. machines already learned to model the tastes and desires that might guide this meander? Is digital disobedience a reluctance to be spoon-fed? A resistance to the state of the art? After forgetting how to code and critically engage with the machines that generate their visual culture, will architects forget their own canon? Will fake histories emerge, channeling popularly held belief and melting what was once thought to be immutable historical fact into a toxifying generative invisorial goo. This is a shift from imposing our will, intention on or within the systems of computation to embracing the dissolution of the binary distinction 
of the intuitive, systemic. While computational design seeks to embed intuition into self-organizing algorithms of complexity theory, this is being superseded by the emergence of a computational intuition. What kind of subjectivity the heuristic bits dream? Rather than our computational architects attempt to shift from invention to pseudo-orchestration, this shift glitch questions the subjective objective division established between architect, its technological matrix. Is this a symptom of a wider blurring of digital material, robot, human, emergence, intuition, process, artifact, where these participants all interact on the same plane? rather than considering the robot as either the slave of saviour or vice versa? The Biddle economy of J.F. Leotard, as well as capitalism and schizophrenia of Deleuze Guattari, as the hash accelerate manifesto for an accelerationist politics of Alex Williams and Nick Shunchek, as well as the specter is still roaming around. One of the first books of Zizek are describing the hiatus, the hyper crisis situation of lefties drinking red wine at the Eflux Carnival during the performative election of overroom populism. As actor of the world of today, in the zeitgeist of absurdism and cutting edges, daily announcements of new gadgets, new saving energy, new electric car, new Viagra, new climate threads, and ignorances using science paradoxically as a new obscurantism in post-human, post-queers, post-dummies. What means to be an architect in terms of apparatus, knowledge, and strategies of knowledge? Rearticulating fabrication within specific organization, the means of production, which question the know-how, the will in the process, in another distribution of task, power, authorship, bottom-up strategies in terms of trespassing the true and the fake, the rigor and madness and the forbidden. Did somebody say time break?